Life is full of challenges, uncertainties, and moments that test our strength and faith. But what if these crises were not meant to break us, but to shape us? Today, we bring you the timeless wisdom of Dr. Miles Munro, a globally renowned author, speaker, and visionary leader known for his practical teachings and profound insights. Dr. Munro empowers us to rise above life's toughest storms and discover the purpose hidden in our pain. We hope that this message is a blessing to you as you advance your life and discover your purpose. Now, let's go into the message. The four kingdom keys to personal success and prosperity. I'm going to give you four keys in these two sessions that I have applied to my life and I use them every day in order to accomplish personal success and how to experience kingdom prosperity. I'm going to focus on succeeding in times of crisis. How do you become successful when everybody else is crumbling around you? How do you make it through the system when the system has spat you out? What do you do when you are no longer needed by a company? What do you do when you lose your income? What do you do when nothing seems to work out and you're losing your car and your house and, and your sanity? What do you do when there's not enough to take care of your daily obligations? How do you handle the crisis of life when life hits you on the blind side? You didn't expect things to go the way they went. What do you do when even friends abandon you and can't help you? Uh, or when your company has to be shut down or, or when you lose a business? What do you do when there's so much pressing on you from creditors. How do you survive when you've been working on a job for 20, 30 years and then they lay you off? And now you're too old to even start a new skill. What do you do when the insurance company doesn't want to insure you anymore because they are assuming that your age doesn't benefit their policy principles? What do you do when Sickness ravages your body and the bills of medical attention is eating away at your own family's legacy. What do you do when you take your kids out of private school and put them in public school? What do you do when you have so much stress in your marriage because of financial problems that it's causing you to have difficult times sleeping with your spouse? Crisis. Let's talk about crisis for a minute. I have a picture up here of a crisis. It's a hurricane. Americans call it a tornado. A hurricane is really a massive tornado. When a hurricane comes, we call it a crisis. Why is a hurricane a crisis? Why is a tornado a crisis? Why is a tsunami a crisis? Why is a snowstorm a crisis? The answer is because a crisis is really circumstances that occur that you have no control over and you didn't cause them. If you lost your job because they laid you off, you can't control that. If your company is not having the kind of customers or the clients have fallen off and you can't make enough money to keep things going, you have to shut it down, that's a crisis. You can't control people coming or not coming to patronize your company. What do you do? Well, a crisis is an institutional circumstances of either nature or the environment or the system that attacks your equilibrium. But there are some good things about a crisis. The world is in crisis right now. The economy of all the countries in the world seem to be under great turmoil. And in your nation and in the Bahamas here where I live, there's no different. People are having difficulty making it. But I come with good news today. I want you to follow me very carefully on what to do in the midst of that crisis. There's some things that you can do that are based on the kingdom system that will give you the success and the prosperity that you need in the midst of that crisis. A couple of things about crisis to write down. Number one, crisis is to incubate of creativity. 
Most of the time, we're not a creative until something bad happens to us. When things fall apart, it makes us think outside the box. Secondly, crisis demands a new way of thinking about old problems. An old problem is you got to pay your mortgage. The problem is the source of income that you used to pay it with has been dried up. But the old problem hasn't gone away. You still got to pay your mortgage. So what you got to do is not find a new way to generate income to pay the old problem. So crisis actually forces you to think about new ways to solving old problems. Thirdly, crisis is an opportunity to improve and advance over old ideas. Sometimes the only way for you to move on is for something to happen to push you. And many times we don't grow until we have to. So crisis comes many times to improve us because we've been stuck in a place too long. And number five, crisis comes also to produce growth and it also produces a sense of development. It makes you develop new approaches to life. Crisis creates new opportunities. It's amazing when, when we uh, look at the world today, every progressive invention came out of a problem. And that's because crisis makes you develop and think in new ways. Number seven is very important. Crisis produces and manifests true leadership ability. No matter how much you would like to claim to be a leader, only crisis proves it. You are not really a leader in good times. Anybody can lead in good times. Leadership is tested and proven when there is a crisis environment. So crisis comes to test to see if you are as mature as you claim to be. You've been telling people how good God has been. Let's see how good he is when things fall apart. You've been telling me how much faith you got. Well, let's see what kind of faith you have when there has to be situations where things don't look too good and you're not sure how you're going to make it in the morning. In other words, crisis comes to test your leadership ability. Another uh, definition of crisis is that crisis ignites the passion for a renewed vision for your life. Crisis takes you back to what God told you from the beginning. Sometimes you stray away and God got to pull the rug from under you to get you back on the floor. And many times a crisis will take you back to the original idea that God told you from the beginning and it's called your original vision. And this is one of the good things about a crisis. It takes you back to your passion. Now, I want to therefore talk a little bit about the benefits of crisis. There's a statement made by Shakespeare. You all know Shakespeare, the great playwright. Shakespeare said these words. I love it. He says, sweet are the uses of adversity. Say that with me. Sweet are the uses of adversity. That's a deep statement. In other words, he's telling us when things are adverse, when things are in crisis, don't panic. Use them. Use them for the positive result. Everything that happens to you could be used to produce something good. That's amazing. Everything. So Shakespeare caught on to something. He realized in his own thinking that adversity can be used to benefit the one under the adversity. The richest man, one of the richest men in America, his name is John Huntsman. John Huntsman is the founder of one of the largest companies in the United States and they produce about 90% of all the plastics, forks and spoons that you use in your house or at your parties. This company is the one, this is like the number one company in the world that produces plastic plates and, and plastic cups. This, this is the company here. It's owned by this man. His company fell into debt and his company actually collapsed some years ago. And he went into a crisis mode and he went to the bank. The bank said they ain't loaning no more money. And his company went into bankruptcy. He went home and told his wife, I quit. I'm never going to start this company again. I'm going to go find me a job. It's over. His wife said to him, honey, you told me that this idea was given to you by God and that you going to build this and make it successful. You, that's why I married you. I believe you. 
Uh, if you're going to do this, go back and start again. He said his wife made him go back and ask another bank. He left the old bank. And he showed the bank the truth. He said, here's what I did in the last 15 years. Here's what happened. And I could start again. I know how to build a business. Will you trust me? And the bank says, I'll take a chance on you. He had no credibility, no assets, just a record that he built a company. The bank took a chance on him. And he began to start the company again. Today, the company is worth over $14 billion. He ran for the President of the United States during the time of Obama. You remember this man's name. He's one of the candidates for the President of the United States. Billionaire. Here's what he said as a result of his crisis. I quote, if there is a silver lining to bad times, it is this. When facing severe challenges, your mind is normally at its sharpest. End quote. Now look at the statement in that statement he said when you are under the biggest pressure that is when your mind is normally at its sharpest because your mind is having to think of things it never thought of before another quote I got from him is this one he said humans seldom have created anything of lasting value unless they were tried or hurting he was talking from experience he said, we don't produce anything that's worth talking about unless we are under pressure. You know, people respect Bahamas Faith Ministries because we used to be called a cult and we survived that. We used to be called a place where we stole people's money and we survived that. We used to be called a, a kind of a passing in the night phenomenon that won't last and we survived that. In other words, you are never trusted for the things you claim. You are always trusted for the things you survived. It is the test that creates credibility. Write it down. It is the test that creates trust. So if you're going through a bankruptcy moment, that's your test of being trusted on the other side of the crisis. In other words, you never think that a crisis comes to conclude your life. It comes to give credibility to your life. Whatever you are making through the troubles right now, what you're going through is going to give you the respect of other people observing you. There are people who are praying that you fail and then they'll trust you when you don't. Weird people in the world. They hope you won't make it and when you make it, they congratulate you. So therefore, don't listen to the naysayers. Accept the test as part of you becoming a successful person. Successful people are always survival testimonies. They weren't born successful. Success is a result of going through a furnace, sleeping with lions, being torn apart, being ripped apart, being criticized and attacked. Success is what people think of you after they try to kill you. This is success. Matter of fact, let me just put it this way. Let me define a crisis in detail for you. A crisis is literally a circumstance or an event or situation affecting you and also affecting your environment over which you have no cause, you didn't cause it, and you also have no direct reason for it being against you and you are victimized by it. You're not responsible for it. You get fired from your job. That's a crisis. If you were told by a doctor that you got a, a, a cyst in your womb, that's a crisis. You didn't cause it. The doctor said you got a, 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 a growth in your, in, your, in your uterus, or you got a growth in your breast, or you got a growth in your brain. That's a crisis. You didn't know it was there. You didn't cause it. If someone says to you, well, you know, uh, uh, we're going to have to withdraw the overdraft from you because, you know, you don't qualify anymore. Well, you tried all these years. Now you're a victim of the system. What do you do? A crisis is simply unplanned and uncontrolled change. A crisis is something that you didn't plan on, but it happened. I think that the greatest fear today, the greatest crisis right now in our whole world is the loss of a job. The ability to financially secure yourself. 
people are afraid of losing their jobs some have already done so as I travel around the world I've seen thousands of people who literally have lost their homes I just came back from Orlando and they got rows of million dollar homes with for sale signs in a gated community I drove through there and I said my god they say yes people having to move out because they cannot keep up with the mortgage and the system has collapsed the bubble has burst and you got people who had millions of dollars are now sleeping in apartments with two bedrooms why because the system unplanned change a crisis sometime you think you got it bad but believe me uh, the, the poor man don't know what they're talking about when they say crisis a man who is broke don't know what it is to have no money it's those who have plenty that hurt the worst the crisis is hitting everybody that's my point but write this down please this is very important and that is this the fear of losing the job is the greatest concern today and I want to talk about this because that's what the Lord told me to talk about in these two sessions to check your concept of job because that is where the problem lie our economic psychology has made us dependent on jobs and that has become our curse because a job is really an opportunity someone else offers you and if somebody offers you an opportunity they can always take it back and if you build your life on someone else's offer you are as safe as how they feel at the time and they can change the way they feel anytime and withdraw the offer anybody know what I'm talking about that's why you can't build your life on a job stay with me I'm gonna help you with this here one of the good things about a crisis if you lost your job if your business shut down if you got to withdraw your investments or you had to sell some property or things ain't working out there's a good side to these kinds of things every test is temporary say that with me every test shout it loud give someone a high five tell them every test is temporary I'm gonna say it loud every test is temporary save it some feeling every test is temporary clap your hands that's the truth So no matter what you're facing, don't panic too long. <laughs> you may panic for a minute, but I've come to tell you the panicking time is over now because you're going to get some wisdom. Nothing is permanent except God and his promises. Everything else is changing. As a matter of fact, God promises us that nothing will remain the same. He promised that. Now God doesn't change, his promise doesn't change, and here's one of his promises. He said in Ezekiel, Ecclesiastes rather, chapter 3, he says, To everything there is only a season, and to every purpose there is a time under heaven. In other words, everything that you experience is only seasonal. If you broke now, it's only a seasonal brokenness. You're about to move into a lot of income. Say neighbor, I'm only passing through a tough moment. Give someone a shout right there. I'm only passing through a tough moment. To everything there is what? A season. You got a bad time in your marriage? Last, outlast it, it's gonna come good in a little while. In other words, your insane wife gonna come back to sanity when the season is over. Your husband is temporarily weird. He gonna come back soon. In other words, your kids are acting crazy now, but it's a seasonal insanity nothing Jesus says is forever so if your company had to die he's gonna be resurrected come on mr. Huntsman talk to me I'm telling you if your business failed I've come to tell you bury it have a good funeral and then get ready for a resurrection tell them I'll be back why because everything is only for a season if they fire you they're gonna be sorry later they're gonna try hire you again when the season change but you can have your own company by then you can start hiring them it's a season for everything can I hear an amen in the place am I talking to myself this morning to everything there's a season so they laid you off write them a letter say thank you very much for letting me enter a new season 
I'll be back. <laughs> this is one of the most important things I learned. Because we're all running a race. Let me show you something here. It's very important here. Crisis demand new patterns of thinking. That's why they come. As a matter of fact, crisis creates new solutions. When things fall apart, you've got to find another way to solve them. See, the problem with humanity is we are creatures of habit. We have a habit of going to work. And all of a sudden, you ain't got no work. You're still going to work. There are folks who get up, put their clothes on, forgot they got fired. 